Hey everyone, it's day nine of 2023 Glow Skin Gems, and today we're talking about the sunscreens. So my regular thing on here is my Sunday sunscreen review series, where I try a new sunscreen every single Sunday, as well as I have a couple other posts throughout the week that I may try sunscreens. So I've tried over 50 sunscreens this year, and I'm gonna count down my top 10. And don't just skip to number one and think that's the best sunscreen, because these are all great sunscreens. One might work better for you than another, Number 10 might be the perfect sunscreen for you and you might hate the other nine. So it just depends on personal preference. That's just like a quick baseline so I don't have to keep saying it through every single sunscreen, but all of these are chemical sunscreens. All of them don't leave a white cast on me and shouldn't leave a white cast on the majority of people. And none of these sting my eyes, but that's kind of like a case by case basis. Something that stings my eyes might not sting yours and vice versa. But let's get into number 10. This one is the Peter Thomas Roth Max Clear Invisible Priming Sunscreen SPF 45. Price wise, this one is $38 for 50 milliliters. It's fragrance and essential oil free. And this is one of those clear gel sunscreens that has like the silicone base. This is the most matte sunscreen on this list, I believe. So if you're looking for matte, matte sunscreen, this is probably the best one. The texture is like a thick, clear gel. And I know some people don't like clear, those clear silicone gel sunscreens. And if that's you, you're not gonna like the sunscreen. That's just the fact. I like this one because it's matte and it keeps me matte for most of the day. I would say to treat this almost like a primer because when I use it like a regular sunscreen and apply it onto my neck and such, it does pill like crazy on my neck, but I don't get any pilling on my face. Also another plus to this is that it is water resistant and it's seriously water resistant. Like I have to try to get this off my face at the end of the day. Like most sunscreens, I can just wash them off with a regular cleanser, but this, I really feel like I need a double cleanse to fully break this down and get this off my skin. But in saying that, I don't feel like this is heavy or uncomfortable on the skin. I think it feels great, it looks great, and performs really well in terms of controlling oils. Only downside to me is the pilling on the neck area and probably the price. Next up we have this one, it's the House of Dohua Rice Brand Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus PA4 Pluses. For price, this one is $32 for 50 milliliters. I love this one because of how easy it is to apply. I've tried a couple sunscreens like this type of texture that sink into the skin super easily and you're gonna see more similar type of textures going forward on the list. This is a new brand to me this year and the packaging is pretty interesting. It's like a paper type of packaging that you can squeeze out every last drop and tear it open to get the last bit out of it. This does contain fragrance and it has a pretty strong floral scent to it. I don't think it lingers much on the skin but it's definitely a, a strong noticeable scent while you're applying it so some people might not like that. It has a sort of natural radiant finish and it has a lightweight feel on the skin so I think it works for a wide variety of skin types including mine that's oily but the downside to this one is just the scent i'd say and also the price next up we have the beauty of joseon ginseng moist sun serum s50 plus pa4 pluses this one is 21 dollars for 50 fluid ounces this is a new launch from them this year and i actually did a sponsored post on this when it was launched uh but obviously any time I talk about this product outside of that specific post is not sponsored. This one does not have any fragrance to it, but it does have some essential oils in it. I don't notice too much of a strong scent. The texture is sort of like a clear gel, but it's not similar to the one I mentioned before that's like a thick silicone based gel. It still feels like a lot of other Asian sunscreens that they blend in and sink into the skin like nothing is there. I love the lightweight feel of this sunscreen and that it has a nice natural radiant finish and can work for a wide range of skin types. It's fine on my oily skin because it's not heavy and greasy. Um, but if you're looking for a matte finish, this is not the sunscreen for you. Next up, we have this one from Naturium. This is their UV Reflect Antioxidant SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. This one is $26 for 50 fluid ounces, and I appreciate that this one is sold at Target. Always great to have another good sunscreen option that I can quickly pick up at a store like Target. There's no fragrance or essential oils in this one. It does have a fluid texture. I'm not personally a fan of fluid textures most of the time, but uh, I know people love them. It has a natural finish and I'd say it leans more towards the matte side of things compared to most other sunscreens, which I definitely like. However, I wouldn't say that this is super matte. I'd say it's satin matte at most, and I wouldn't call this particularly oil controlling on my skin. But again, we're in a world where radiant sunscreens are everywhere, so this is a great option if you want something that's a little bit less than just beaming glow. I love that this one is water resistant, always a great factor to have when you're going to be out and about and possibly sweating. It's easy to quickly apply and blend in without any white cast. I sometimes feel the texture a little bit tacky to apply, but it's not a thing that bothers me. It goes away and it's very lightweight on the skin, you don't feel anything. And sometimes I get a little bit of flakiness in my facial hair if it's too long. Like right now I'd be fine using it, but if like I'd grown out my facial hair for another week, I'd probably see a little bit of flakiness in it from using this. But Besides that, it's fine. Decent price is pretty mid-range, but again, I just love that I can go to Target and pick up a great sunscreen like this and go on with my day. 
Next one, we're on to number six. This one is Trader Joe's Daily Facial Sunscreen, SPF 40. Now the thing that's holding this one back is the fact that it's only available at one store, Trader Joe's, and only available in store. Like you can't even buy this online from them, but it's just so good I have to put it in this list. I got this from $9 at Trader Joe's. It's 50 milliliters of product. It's another one of those invisible clear gel sunscreens, similar to something like a Super Goop Unseen sunscreen, but I personally think this one is way better than that. It has no fragrance or essential oils. It's water and sweat resistant as well. I mentioned this in my review before, but the finish and experience of using this is similar to the Starface clear as day sunscreen and that one was one of my top five picks last year. It has a natural matte finish. I'd say it's more matte than the Naturium one I just mentioned. Top selling point for me is the fact that it's so cheap for such a good product. I do wish it was higher SPF because it's only SPF 40, but it's good enough for a nice daily sunscreen, especially since it's water and sweat resistant. Next up, we're getting into the top five. And so this one I have here is the Tacobo Bio Watery Sun Cream SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. You can get this for around $12 for 50 fluid ounces. The price fluctuates depending on where you get it from whether it's Stalvana or Yes Style or any other online retailer. It has added fragrance, but I don't notice much of it. Texture-wise, it's like a thicker, milky fluid. It leaves a natural finish on the skin, and it's very lightweight, easy to apply. And I like this on my oily skin. I'm surprised I actually have any left of it because I was using this as my daily sunscreen for a while. Like I said, it's lightweight, but I wouldn't go into this expecting it to be matte or super oil controlling. I just thought it was a nice natural finish that lasted well on me throughout the day, it didn't make me super greasy or oily or anything like that. It has lots of the new age filters, which I always love. And there's a lot of different sunscreens with this similar type of formula that you can get. So, I mean, if there's similar ones out there, just get the cheapest one, honestly. I know there's one that I tried also this year from Dr. Clerical. I'll put a picture of it up here. And also one I tried a couple weeks ago from um, TM. I'll put a picture up here as well. Those all have similar textures and experience of using, so check those out as well. Number four, we have this one is the Nivea Japan UV Deep Protect and Care Gel SPF 50 Plus PA4 Pluses. Selling point for this one is very cheap. I got this for like $8 and it's, you get around, how much is this? 80 grams of product. It does have quite a strong alcohol-y scent or that, that type of alcohol citrusy scent that some of these Japanese sunscreens have because alcohol is high up on the ingredient list, helps it to absorb really nicely and quickly. So yeah, it does have that added fragrance. The texture of this is very fluid. I have an, a couple other sunscreens on here that are similar to this, but this one is the most fluid texture out of them. This one has a natural radiant finish and I think it works well on my skin because it's sort of dry touch. Like it's not gonna be matte or oil controlling, but it's dry touch to the skin and you don't feel like it's super greasy or anything like that. It just, if your skin was radiant before, it's gonna be radiant after this as well. I assume if your skin was matte before, this is not gonna add too much shine to it. But again, for eight bucks, you really can't beat that. This one we have here is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence, SPF 50 plus, PA4 pluses. This is the new formula that they came out with this year. This is obviously a cult favorite for many years, but they reformulated this year. And I think this version is actually a little bit better. Personally, I thought the, the previous version was very, very shiny on my skin. This one still has that sort of natural radiant finish, but it's not as shiny on my skin. And again, it has that dry touch feel. Texture wise, it's like a gel cream. Uh, it's around $14 for 70 grams of product. And again, the price fluctuates a lot with these Asian sunscreens, depending on where you buy them from. It has fragrance and that noticeable alcohol-y scent for a bit, but it doesn't linger on this one. I almost felt like the previous version to this almost made me more oily and sort of dried out my skin or dehydrated my skin, but this one doesn't do that to me. I think this one is great for a wide variety of skin types, including oily skin because it's lightweight, but again, don't go into this one expecting it to be super oil controlling. Additionally, they have a lot of different versions of that sunscreen now that they came out with this year. The Biore Aqua Rich, they have a, obviously the, the Asian Japan version. They also came out with a version in the UK and they came out with a version that they sell in the US. They have different formulas and perform differently. The one I'm talking about is the Japan version. So look out for that. Number two, this one is the Eucerin Sun Hydro Protect Ultra Light Fluid SPF 50 plus around $17 for 50 fluid ounces of product. This was a strong contender for number one. Uh, a couple of these like in the top five are strong contenders for number one. This has added fragrance to it. I don't notice it too much, but again, if you're looking out for fragrance, this is not the one for you. It has a fluid texture, which I'm okay with. Like I had mentioned before with the, another one on here, I don't love fluid textures, but I know some people really love fluids. What I love about this one is that it blends in super easily and quickly onto the skin. You don't have to spend a bunch of time rubbing it in. I'm always looking out for new sunscreens from Eucerin because one of their sunscreens, the oil control uh, gel cream is one of my favorite sunscreens of all time. 
And this one is actually pretty similar in use and finish on the skin. So it's always good to have another option that I like from them because that oil control gel cream is sold out a lot of the time. It's similar but not the same. It has that sort of satin matte finish when it goes on, but I don't find this one as oil controlling. This would be higher up on my list and possibly number one if it was water and sweat resistant. Um, I don't know if it is. I can't confirm that. I looked on their website, looked everywhere, and I couldn't see if it was. Because when I look online at their oil control gel cream, they ex explicitly state that it's water and sweat resistant, but they don't do it for this one. So I'm gonna assume it's not sweat resistant, and because of that, it's number two, but still a fantastic sunscreen. And last up, the number one pick. I'm going with the Coast Suncut UV Perfect Essence Super Waterproof SPF 50 Plus PA4 Pluses. This one is around $16 for 110 grams of product. So this is actually one of the first sunscreens that I tried many years ago when I first started my page on Instagram, but I revisited this year and fell in love with it all over again. They have a bunch of different versions of this sunscreen and I would implore you to look out to make sure you're getting the Essence one. I tried the gel version of this and I didn't like it as much. The gel version was sort of drying on my skin and it felt like it was like sucking the life out of my skin. This one has a similar natural finish to it and gives really good protection, but it's not drying my skin out and like feel like my skin is dying from wearing it. This has no fragrance or essential oils. It also is water sweat resistant, like the name is in the name, super waterproof. And plus the affordable price tag. You get a big bottle of this and it's only around $15, $16. Again, price fluctuates depending on where you buy it from. This texturally is very similar to the Biore Aqua Rich Essence that was number three, but I feel like I like this one a tiny bit better. And it's very similar to the Nivea UV, the Nivea Japan UV one that was number four. However, the texture of this one is not as fluid as that one. And I don't think the alcohol scent is as strong in this one. And I think the finish on this one's a little bit better. This one's more natural while the Nivea one is more natural radiant, but this still has the same dry touch feel to it and leaves my skin very comfortable and looks great throughout the day. And plus I think this would work for a wide range of skin types unless you have super, super dry skin and you're looking out to not buy sunscreens with alcohol in them. But again, I like having alcohol in my sunscreens. It gives it a nice experience to use and blend in. So I'm always fine with that. But that's through all the sunscreens, the top 10 of this year. I assume this video is gonna be very long after I edit it. Um, so hopefully you watch the whole thing. I went through all my posts and I had like 23 contenders that I did like and I cut it down to this top 10. Let me know if I should talk about those other ones as well. If you've tried any of these sunscreens, let me know which one of them is your favorite or if you have any favorites that's not on this list, let me know. I'm always looking for new sunscreens to try next year in my Sunday sunscreen review series. So I'll come back for that every Sunday. So let me know your favorites down below in a comment and I'll see you guys tomorrow when we talk about body sunscreens.